friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the adorable Beach Bear stamp set from My Favorite Things. And before I get started, I want to choose a piece of pattern paper from this Echo Park Pool Party 6x6 to use as my color palette. So I'm just going to tear out the piece that I wanted to use, this really pretty stripy print, and tuck that under my cardstock panel. That is a piece of Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock, and I've stamped my images out in Extreme Black Hybrid Ink from MFT. I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers, and I'm starting with the two polar bears. I didn't want to use any grays for them because this is a nice, bright, summery card. So I decided to go with E40 and E41 instead. Kind of reminds me of really pale sand. So I used the E41 to lay in a little shadow on the outer edge of the bear's bodies, along the legs and the back of the head, and then blend it out with the E40. And then I'm going to smooth the transition from the E40 into the white with my colorless blender. And then I'm going to repeat that process for the other little bear. I'm just coloring him a bit different because he's facing a little bit differently and kind of laying down. So I'm adding a little shadow up on the back of his body because that would be under the umbrella so it would not be getting as much sun. And then a little bit on the face just to accentuate the muzzle area all with that E41 and then blending out with the E40 and then smoothing that transition into the white once again with my colorless blender. Then I'm going to give them some rosy cheeks with R11 and R20. Just adds another little pop of color onto their otherwise white fur. And I colored the inside of their ears with the R11. So now I'm going to begin pulling colors from that striped pattern paper. And the first color that I'm using is the navy blue. And I chose B95, B97, and B99. And I just counted out all the different stripes. I knew I was going to repeat some colors. So I figured out where I wanted the next navy blue stripe to be and then added that in with the B99. And then I'm coming in with the B97 to blend that out as my midtone. And then I'll finish with my highlight shade, which is the B95. I decided it would be easier to color in the white stripes on the blanket first, so I wouldn't have to like count out every single stripe. So I'm just adding a touch of BG10 for that. Just doing every other stripe with a little bit of that right up under the little bear. And then I'm also going to do the underside of that little ring with that shade. And then I'm going to move on to some oranges and I chose YR04, YR07, and YR09. So I'm doing the little bear on the left, um, his little shirt, in the same colors that I'm using on the blanket, but I'm not going to leave any stripes for the white because there's already enough white with the bear being white himself. So I'm going to leave them on the blanket to tie in that pattern paper and because there are so many stripes available, but on the bathing suit or top, whatever that is, I'm just going to skip the whites. I am going to use those oranges for that little life ring though. And I used the YR09 first to add a bit of shading. Then I blended that out with the YR07 and then I'll fill in all the rest of that white space with the YR04. Just making sure to work over the edge of that YR07 so that I get a nice smooth blend. Then I'm moving on to the darker pink stripe and I went back to my R20 and added in R22 and R24 for that. So I'm going to do two more stripes on the blanket. I'm also going to do the little crab with these shades. So I started with the R24 and then I'm blending that out with the R22. And then I filled in the rest of him with the R20. I did decide that this was a little bit light for what I wanted, so I am going to go back and color the crab a little bit darker. But before I do that, I'm going to finish the rest of the stripes on the blanket 
and also do the next stripe on the little bear's top. So I use the R24 at the back and then I'm blending forward with the R22 and then the R20. And I'm also going to do the far right stripe on the little umbrella. So I use the R24 to define both edges of that stripe and blended toward the center with the R22 and then the R20. And then like I said, I went back and just used the darkest two shades to do a second layer on that crab. Next, I wanted to pull out that dusty teal stripe in the pattern paper. So I'm using BG72, BG75, and BG78. So again, I'm gonna do the little bear's shirt and two more stripes on that blanket using the BG78 first, blending out with the BG75 and finishing with the BG72. And then I'm also going to do the sand pail with these shades. So I'm adding a little bit of that BG78 on both sides because I want it to look nice and round. And then I'm blending toward the center with the BG75 and then I will fill that in with the BG72. First, I pulled the BG75 toward the center and then filled in the rest of that space. And then I'm using the BG72 at the top and then adding BG70 for the center because I want to go back and add some sand into that pail in a little bit. Then I'm moving on to my yellows and I'm using Y11, Y13, and Y15. So I started with the Y15 on the shirt and the blanket and blended out with the Y13 and then the Y11. And I'm also going to do the center stripe on the umbrella. So again, just adding the darkest shade on both edges so that it looks dipped down in those areas. And then adding the highlight in the center so it looks pushed out. And then for the last stripe on the blanket and the final section of the umbrella, I'm going to use R11, R20, and R21. So I'm just coloring those in the exact same way with the darkest um, underneath the bear and then on the umbrella in those creases. Then I'm going to use E43 and E44 to color in the umbrella a handle and the sand in the pail. I just used the E44 for the umbrella handle, but I'm going to start with the E43 for the sand and then add some tiny little dots in there with the E44 just to give it some texture and help it look like the sand that's going to be on the card later on. I am doing it a little bit darker because I want it to look like wet sand, the kind that you would use to build a sand castle. So once I'm finished with that, I'm gonna take my black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and go over the eye of the polar bear and also the crab, just to make those nice and bright and shiny again. And then I'll trim these images out with their matching dies. For my focal panel, I'm going to take a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, and then I'm taking a long strip of post-it tape and tearing off one side of it so it has a rough edge. And then I'm going to place that on my cardstock at an angle and then tuck the little ends behind so that it stays securely on that panel. Then I'm going to grab some Distress Oxide ink. The first shade that I'm using is Antique Linen. And I'm going to go right up to that tape so that I get that little bit of an edge to give me an irregular border of sand at the top there. So I'm going to blend that most of the way down the panel. I don't have to go all the way down because I'm going to be adding a different shade down there. I wanted to darken it up with some gathered twigs. So I'm going to blend that on from the bottom and I'm putting that on fairly heavily because I want to pull that color up into the top area and then kind of get softer as I go toward the middle of that panel. I'm gonna go back with another layer down at the bottom to add more definition. And then I will go back to my antique linen blending brush 
and just uh, go over the transition area to make sure that it's relatively smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect because I am going to do some splatter detail. And to do that, I'm just gonna cover the top part of that panel with a piece of scrap paper. It was actually my to-do list that I had finished from the day before. And then I'm going to add both of those colors onto an acrylic block, just because there's not a lot of room there on my mini media mat. So I'm adding some water between those so I can add a few flicks of plain water first. And then I added the antique linen and then I'll go straight in to the gathered twigs and just make sure that I get a lot of speckles on there so it gives it that really great sandy texture. I also wanted to add a little bit of white in there so it would almost look like sparkly kernels of sand. So I'm taking a little Copic opaque white and I'm adding that to my acrylic block as well. And I'll water that down and do some splatters with that as well. I'm going to be adding some more of that Copic opaque white to create a different look at the top in just a bit. So I had it sitting out on my desk and I thought that would be nice to add to the sand as well. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to peel off the uh, post-it tape so you can reveal that edge there. And I've cleaned off my Waffle Flower Mini Media Mat so I can do the top part. I flipped it upside down just because I find it easier to come up from the bottom. But um, I'm using Salvage Patina for my ocean. And I'm bringing that up almost to that torn edge. I want to leave just a little bit of white there to be the waves. So I'm going to blend on a good bit of that. And then I want to darken up the top of that. So I'm going to grab some evergreen bough, which I know might sound kind of strange for an ocean, but I thought this would match with that teal stripe on the pattern paper and just give it that bit of a dark look at the top. So I just sponged on a little bit of that and then went back to my salvage patina and went over the transition to make that nice and smooth once again. So I've done these kinds of backgrounds before, but today I'm gonna to take it one step further and add an extra detail that I've never tried, but I've seen other people do and I thought it looked pretty cool. So I'm taking some more of that Copic Opaque White and a stiff bristled paintbrush and I'm picking that up and kind of stippling it onto the border between the water and the sand to create the look of some frothy waves. So I'm gonna go all the way across that blue edge and then I'm going to bring it forward all the way down into the sand and just create like some different scallops and things to kind of um, create that look, you know, the, the waves don't come on in a straight line. They always have little dips and curves to them. So I just want it to look a little more realistic. I also tried adding a little bit up in the top part of the water, but I didn't really like the look of that. So I kind of brushed away uh, most of it with my finger. So there's just like a faint little bit there, but not too much. But I thought that really added a cool look. Um, you can do as much or as little as you want. And there you can see how that looks up close. So I let that dry and then trimmed it down with one of the A2 Stitch Rectangle Stacks Set 2 from MFT. And now I have popped it into my Misty so I can stamp my sentiment. I'm using Versafine Onyx Black ink and stamping that down. This ink lays really well over Distress Oxides. Um, you do have to be careful though because it will be wet for a little while. So you really want to let this dry or else, you know, heat set it with your heat gun. I stamped that down twice to make sure I had a good impression. And then I'm going to pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using a piece of snow cone cardstock from MFT and stamping down in Blue Jay ink from Lawn Fawn. And I did the little bear with the flippers and a few little sand kernels and the sentiment that says, I hope your day is flippin' awesome. 
I'm going back to my Echo Park Pool Party pattern paper pad and choosing another print that would coordinate and trimmed both of those down with the largest of the A2 stitch rectangle stacks set to. And you can see that some of my splatter detail from the sand actually got onto my card front, which was a little too close. But I'm going to cover it up anyway with this piece of pattern paper. So I'm just lining that up in the center and it leaves just the slightest border on the outside edges. Then I'll take this teal with the tiny triangle print and run that down the middle of the card vertically. And even though it has that little hole cut into it, I didn't want to waste this piece and it's going to get covered up by the focal panel anyway. I've added some foam tape to the back of that, so I'll just peel off the release papers and then I'm going to line that up in the center, just using those stripes as a guide. And then I will press that down into place. And then I can bring in my images. I'm going to start with the polar bear that's laying on the beach towel or beach blanket and add a little liquid glue to the back of that using my favorite Tombow Mono Multi Glue. And that is going to go toward the top of the scene right near the shoreline. So just want to get that down into place. And then this second little bear is going to go on the left but a little bit more down toward the sentiment. Um, just kind of drawing your eye toward that and I adjusted my first little bear really quick That's the great thing about using liquid glue. It gives you that little bit of time before it dries permanent I added the inner tube over on the right just trying to fill in the scene as much as possible And then I've got this little bucket of sand I'm going to place that down and then finally take the little crab and adhere that so it's overlapping that bucket just a bit. So I'm going to adjust that bucket a little bit as needed and then add that little crab also just above that sentiment. And as a finishing touch, I'm actually going to skip the stickles today because I thought this could be a more gender neutral card. And instead I'm going to add some details with my white gel pen. So I'm adding polka dots to the umbrella, just uh, spacing them out evenly and going uh, one stripe at a time until I've covered each of those little sections. I thought those tied in nicely with that teal pattern paper. And then I'm going to add some shine marks to that inner tube to make it look nice and glossy. So I just did a curved line and a dot on opposite ends. And I'll also add a shine mark to the sand pail. Just a straight line and a dot on that one following the edge. And then I will pick this up to the camera so you can see all of that cute detail. I just love these little polar bears on vacation. And there's another peek at the inside. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had so much fun playing with this adorable stamp set. I really hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, please go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones twice a week every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of the products I use, you'll find them listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.